Oh my god. It's here. It's here. Check this out. Oh yeah. Oh. It's a little bigger than what I thought it was. Just a package though. Oh my god. This is exciting. Alright. So this is uh this is super exciting. I don't know what we're gonna get aside from uh, some of the basic stuff. I'm just I'm really hoping that it is what they say it is because nobody wants to uh, be stuck inside during quarantine or maybe you got somebody that's you know not feeling well or they have uh, underlying conditions and uh, you just want to play at home. So hopefully this gives you and I an answer as to, you know, if you can do that and feel like you're actually playing, because I swear to God, man, I'm tired of uh, not being able to go out. Okay. It's the box inside of a box right now. Alright, so we've got the uh, Ernest Sports. It used to be called just the ES16. Um, I, I don't think they've rebranded their boxes, but it's called the ES16 Tour Plus now. Or just ES Tour Plus, my bad. Uh, it sounded like they had some previous issues with the latest or the last model. So uh, apparently they've got all the kinks worked out, and we're about to find out. Open it this way. Um, just a looks like a warranty card, user manual. Um, I think this is the calibration uh, equipment. I guess every two weeks you have to calibrate this thing, something like that, in order to keep it super accurate. And then. Oh, that thing looks pretty damn nice. I'm not gonna lie. I guess we'll find out how it is here in a second. Okay. There's cables in there. I don't want to throw that away. Get some foam off. Let's get this thing out of the bag. I can hear something moving around in there. I don't know if you can hear that. Right there. That don't sound good. I don't know what that is, but I probably should quit doing that. So just to get started off, uh, you've got to have a custom gaming PC. So that thing that says Gigabyte, that's my graphics card, which is the most crucial part. Okay, so we're going to run through and I'm going to show you the specs on my computer. Um, so I'm running a i7 7700K. Uh, I'm running that at I think 4.5 uh, gigahertz, which is pretty quick. I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, lots of storage on my computer, but that's not really super crucial for this. And then my graphics card here. Up in the top right, you can see how it says NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. The minimum that's required for this unit is a 1070. Uh, well, that's what they recommend, and the 1080 Ti is going to surpass that. My bad, guys. I kind of got sidetracked, a little too excited to play. So I may or may not have already been playing on it for the, like, the last week and a half. Regardless of that, let's just give you guys a quick rundown of my setup here. So, I got my projector hanging up there. I ran a uh, HDMI cable all the way from my office out into the garage, just up and through the attic. Still, uh, still got to put the cover back up there. But uh, this thing's pretty good. I think that I should have gone with a, uh, a wide throw. 
just because it obviously you can see it's not filling up the screen completely it only stops right there and uh, it would have been better to have a wide throw with a one to one ratio rather than like a four to three or a sixteen by nine uh, but you guys can learn from my mistakes next thing we've got here is this turf out here I got this from Home Depot and uh, I just wanted it to uh, I wanted to be able to putt and have it feel somewhat realistic so um, I just put that all the way up to the screen that way you can put on turf and not halfway across concrete uh, and then this mat right here I got this from Amazon and um, I can't remember the name of the mat but I'll try and leave a, a link of the uh, where I got the mat in the description so you guys can check that out but what I've noticed with this so far is that it's a really good mat. I probably hit probably close to three, four hundred shots with this uh, ES Tour Plus, and I cannot tell where I've been hitting from. I don't think you guys can either, but it's all good. This this mat's really good. It does feel somewhat fat when you hit off of it, um, and just what I mean by that is like. Obviously, I guess you guys know what I mean, but the other thing is you can actually put real tees in this It's no joke. This thing's uh pretty damn nice. I Haven't been playing with real tees just because they break uh, What I've been playing with is this little rubber tee that yes, or I guess Ernest sports sent with their launch monitor and that was what was inside that little calibration tube. Um, I prefer to hit off that actually. Oh man, look at that. Looks gorgeous out tonight. Anyways, neighbors probably think I'm filming them. Uh, <clears throat> another thing is I've got this, so with this projector, I don't actually have to uh, get up there and push the button. I've got a little remote for it that I can just turn it on and off, which is super nice. Just because that thing's pretty high up there. These are 10 foot ceilings. So, yeah. The other thing is, is I've got this mouse over here that I use. Uh, I use this out here just so I can get onto the app and then select where I want to hit and things like that. Um, it's been pretty useful so far. Uh, with the distance that I'm going, I'm going through like two walls. So with that being said, the mouse kind of loses some connectivity. So I kind of have to hold it up on the wall like this and help it reach the connection. And I've also got some, uh, like a little speaker out here for some audio. Uh, it's not like it's a necessity, it just kind of helps make it feel a little more realistic. And by a little, I mean birds and stuff like that. So this hitting screen I got from Amazon as well. Let me try and get you focused in here a little better. So the stitching on it is not real heavy duty, uh, but it is decent enough. And you have some little eyelets here that you can tie into and help pinch off the screen. A lot of the reviews on this said that the, the creases in it were pretty heavy and kind of hard to get out. And you can kind of see that little streak down the center there. Uh, it's just because they fold it up and uh, they don't ship it. Uh, inside of like some sort of thing rolled up I guess uh, and then behind that I've got this painter canvas that I got from Home Depot I hit into this for about three or four days before my screen came and uh, it worked all right the one issue I had with it was that I blew a hole out down there I just hit a drive into it and it happened to hit right on the stitching and kind of messed it up okay one last thing so with the launch monitor I have to take 
And actually, let's connect in the app first, and then I'll show you. But uh, I have to take that, because it's Bluetooth, I have to take and hold it up to the wall because my office is kind of far away. And uh, I have to make sure, dang, there's a lot of fireworks going on out there. Fourth of July. I don't think you guys are going to get to see any, though. But anyways, uh, so just pull up the app here. I'm sorry about the poor lighting, but this is just what I have to work with right now. I'm sure I'll get like a little spotlight to come down off the ceiling and shine directly down right here. Uh, but for now, this is what I'm working with. Okay. So in the top left there, it's going to say that it couldn't find Ernest Sports device. And that's because you have to, uh, it knows it's an Ernest Sports device. Right there. It knows it's an Ernest Sports device because you have to tell the app that that's what you're hitting off of. And then you'll have to select the model as well. So for Ernest Sports, they have like the 2020 and a, uh, a couple other ones. but. Um, yeah, so I have to hold this like somewhat close to the office and then you'll see it register and say that it's connected. Okay guys, I only have the demo version, so we're playing at this course called Aviera, I think. I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. Close the garage. Don't need my neighbors getting all jealous. Okay. 291 yards. So I've got my elevation set at 4,000 feet above sea level. Uh, used to playing at about 4,500, uh, but I dialed it in uh, to hit about the same distance that I usually play. So. 4,000 is where it was at. Uh, let's hit a driver. I'm probably going to slice this one pretty good. But we'll see what we can make of it. So all I'm doing, I'm trying to line this up uh, perpendicular with the wall so that this is straight. Uh, that way, if I hit straight into the wall, it'll register as straight. If I have it kicked off uh, angle just a little bit, it's probably going to throw my shot off pretty good. So we're going to stick with this. And I guess I'll just show you guys what I'm working with here. So you do, here's another thing. Playing with a Titleist Pro V1. I don't even know if you guys can see that. You can't. It's a Pro V1. Anyways, uh, it's got a straight line logo, which is what's required to use this unit. If you have anything with like a curved logo, I think TaylorMade has a curved one, it's not going to be very accurate, I don't think. It, it might play it. I don't know. I've never tried, but you get the gist of it. Okay. I've got my ball set up there for the drive. You can see that the LED is green. It means that it's registered my ball. And there are some kinks with this, and hopefully I get to show you guys those. Uh, like if you put your ball too close to the, the sensor, it won't read it very well, uh, or sometimes it just won't read it at all. And then there are other times when you're chipping, you'll, you'll get to a spot where you have to chip, and it's looking for a certain kind of chip. So it won't register it at all unless you hit it a certain way. First shot of the night, it's like 10 p.m. when you really couldn't golf in real life because it's too dark, a little stiff, mowed the lawn today and whatnot, so don't judge me. Let's uh, try and hit a good one. Oh, she sliced. 
Yeah, I probably would have done that too. It's pretty accurate. You saw how bad that thing sliced. It was not uh, good by any means. I was a little open. Club head speed was 107. Sounds about right. So I've got 15 foot gimmies on, and I cannot, uh, or I don't have any hazard uh, challenges. So basically, the thing's just going to hit like it would off the fairway right here. They're 58 yards. Put a trusty 58 degree. This is a uh, SM8. The Voki SMA, I love this thing. It's got a lot of bounce on it, but the weight in the toe is absolutely magical. If you catch a fat shot, this thing will help you get through, especially with the bounce. Oh, I want to show you guys something. Watch this. Didn't even hit the ball. Look at that. Oh my god, I just bounced. <laughs> what the hell? Woo! Okay. That was not intentional. We're going to take a mulligan in there. I was not anticipating for that to go in. All I was anticipating was uh, for it to read the shot, even though I didn't hit the ball. That was pretty badass. But, uh,. So this thing's microphone activated. In other words, uh, if you catch a fat shot and you don't catch the ball very good, and it doesn't register that you hit the ball, it's gonna go straight. There's no ball data. So do you wanna see if we can do that again? I'm curious. Go in. Go in. Almost did, my swing was different. That was wild. It's still reading your club. It's just not seeing the ball, so it's trying to make up for it with club data. Okay, here we go. Real shot. Not a bad shot. A little deep. Roll back. And I've got the greens on pretty uh, soft settings so that the ball will actually uh, spin. I was not anticipating for it to spin that much. I was just expecting for it to stop. So I'm probably going to be changing that. So I got a 39 foot putt. The same stuff, just set your ball up. And then give her hell. So I got an Odyssey putter here. I'm not taking my glove off, even though I probably would in a real golfer putting situation. But this one, all I have to do is get it within 15 feet. If I drain the putt, I'll be happy. Five inches downhill, that stuff does come in to play pretty good. So I'm just lining it up straight with the simulator. Probably short. Way short. Alright, I don't know what part of the last clip we got, but I just hit onto the green now I'm putting. Get in. Two feet, one inches away. Not bad. Not bad. Probably driving. So we'll set this up. There's my gimme. Go grab the driver. Hopefully this one's not as bad. 
Lights green on the monitor. Read my ball. Pushing her right because I knew she was going to do that. It's all good though. Club head 107, 278. Not bad, 63 yards in. Play another 58. So here's another thing. I'm left-handed. Obviously, I've got it on the side that I would be hitting from. If you're right-handed, all you have to do is take and just pick up that unit, line it up with the wall, and then you can hit right. And it's pretty easy uh, when you're both playing. So let's say you got a lefty and a righty. It's pretty easy. It's not that uh, cumbersome. So that might be part of the reason why that thing did what it did. But I know that that shot was not as close as it made it out to be. So here's one of those chipping situations. Let's see if I can get it to do the messed up thing. But I'm going to make sure that I don't run out of video. Okay, here we go. Make sure. Golden. Okay. 23 feet. 23 feet ain't that far. Launched it. Yeah, hit 32. Which. In all reality, that sounds about like it's the right distance. So it's going to give me a gimme because I'm 15 foot gimmies. I'm automatic. No, I'm just playing. Uh, I just think the putting is a little messed up. I don't want to mess with my game too much. So I just leave long gimmies so I don't have to do that too much. Okay. We hit a. Uh, Let's do a gap wedge. 126.2 yards to the hole. There we go. We'll select gap wedge just to make sure it knows where to look. Let's see what happens here. 63.1 yard. Oh, that's where it's aimed. One foot two inches uphill from where I'm hitting. She baited. That's all me, that's not the game or the monitor. That's all me. Get the old 60 out. Oh, one water hazard. This will re hit. So I'm back at the tee box. I've got my hit and then drop, and now I'm sitting two, hitting three. 
Okay, this one's not going left. Okay, she might. A lot better. Come back. Yeah, that might have looked a little unrealistic. That's all right. I'm only doing this so I can golf at home. I'm not expecting this thing to be a $10,000 unit. I'm expecting this thing to be a mid-range unit. Chip and wood button. Seven feet. That's a thirty seven foot putt if I ever saw one. Okay, thirty two feet. That's a gimme. Well, okay, I think I'm uh, going to wrap this thing up here. I think you guys have seen enough. Um, let me know what you guys think about this. And uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be doing more videos about this, maybe doing some hole-in-one challenges. Whatever you guys want to see, just let me know. We'll see if we can make it happen. Thanks for watching, guys.